Go ahead. You see that you see that their their what they know, their background is, is reflected in how and what they train in. And if it isn't appropriate, then it's dangerous. In other words, you could take competitive shooters who are very good shots, if that's all that's involved, and put them in a tactical environment, and they invariably lose the fight simply because they're not trained to think. You have the luxury and competition of, of, A, you know the course of fire in advance and have the opportunity to rehearse it, to train for it. Well, how nice. But, of course, in the real world, you don't have those luxuries. Yeah. You've got to come up, can usually come from behind in the power curve and regain the initiative from an attacker and then they'll go down and they'll heal, they'll heal. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you, so you don't have the, the ability to practice the fight in advance. And of course, if you did and you're a civilian, don't go. You have that option. If you know there's going to be a fight, don't go. Right. Stay away from the place. And then there's no shooting, no police, no lawsuits, no courts, you know, no lawyers. You know, and that's why we cover the classroom first. Yeah. All those things affect everything you do. Your choice of gun, ammunition, holsters, ancillary equipment, and then how you use all this stuff all has to be influenced by the three liability factors, tactical, criminal, and civil. And most of these guys don't understand any of this stuff because it didn't apply to them. Right. The soldier doesn't have to worry about that. The police officer's liabilities are handled by the, they're in, you know, usually Lloyd's of London, you know, right. the insurance companies that insure the city and, the, and therefore the police agency for whom they they work. But the everyday mom, and you and me, it's a different professional problem. person. Yep. It's a different. It's game. a completely different problem. So the civilians have found this very useful and understandable because it's a, it's very simple. Yeah. Now, um, one of the issues I had trying to find you or any instructor as a course, I I was told that um, some of your methods were outdated. Yeah, I've heard that too. Yeah. <laughs> um, what is your response to that? Because for me, like, there's no school like the old school, and there's a reason that those techniques have stuck for a while but why why do you think that people feel your stuff is outdated and the only people that feel that it's outdated on. or claim that are people that, that feel threatened by me and what I do they are usually competitive shooters they are people that my presence and my experience make uneasy because they know I know something they don't know because they haven't been there and done it and I have Okay, and, and I don't want to sound arrogant about it, but there is a difference. And theory is not reality. I deal with reality. And my background speaks for itself. I have more perspective because I have more background in, in these subjects than they do. And also, they, they tend to reinvent the wheel because they haven't done their homework. Most of these issues on techniques and, and everything else were decided a long time ago. Okay, they, many of them think they have improved on state of the art when in effect they've actually taken two steps backwards from actual state of the art. Yeah. They don't know any better because they don't have the sufficient perspective because they don't understand the history of it all. If you don't understand the question, then you, you know, then the solution is somewhat moot. You know? Yeah. Uh, and you have also seen a lot of this, the, the criticism that I have heard of is based almost entirely on assumptions. Somebody said that somebody heard that somebody said. They never have been to a course that I teach. They have no idea what my methods really are. And therefore, who cares what they think? You know, they really can't criticize legitimately because they don't know what the actual program is. They've never seen it. They've never taken it. They don't know a thing about what I do. What, I, what they do know is that Chuck students win gunfights, and that threatens them. Right. And, and I am somewhat of a mystery figure to a lot of these guys. And as you know, I'm an outspoken guy. I don't mess around and beat around the bush. I call things you? what they are. No. <laughs> you know, I, a diplom diplomat, I'm not. You know, on the other hand, but straight you're... talk matters. Exactly. You don't have time to be subject. diplomatic Life here. Life and death are serious business. Yeah. And I'm no amateur, and a lot of these guys are. You know? If you've never been anywhere or done anything, you got no right to criticize people who have. And that's really my best response. <laughs> End of story right there. Yeah, yeah I mean, this yeah. is a free country. Take whatever training from whomever you want. But right. remember, you have a responsibility to yourself. If you want to bet your life on the results, and yeah. you are, 
when you do this. This is serious business, and, and I have been quoted as saying life and death are serious business, too serious to be left to amateurs. I didn't say that lightly nor snidely. It's a fact. This is dangerous business. You better know what you're talking about. And the student that comes in, and they have paid for this privilege. They're paying you to tell them and show them what you know. And they have a right to expect that it's legitimate. Okay? My students win gunfights more than any other instructional program. They always have. They always win. And the reason they do is because the techniques work under the, under the conditions that real people and real fights have to operate under. You know? And it's the keep it simple stupid thing. Nobody talks about it because they haven't experienced what it takes. They don't. If you don't know the problem, how can you come up with a solution? And, and again, you've said it in the course, but um, the keep it simple stupid method is very important when you're under stress. And it makes sense because I'm just shooting at the range and I'm making mistakes and I'm barely under any stress. So the simple techniques, the simple movements, the efficiency of it makes sense. Well, there's a lot of different ways to do a lot of different things in the world, including shooting, you know. And there are a lot of different shooting disciplines, but they don't really overlap to one another. And the, the, the arbitrary superimposition of competition, philosophies, techniques, and mentalities, if you will, strategies, into the realm of combat or tactical shooting, as it's now called, is a mistake. They don't apply. And if, and if you attempt to apply that sort of thing in the wrong environment, it becomes very dangerous. Uh, this is why competition shooters tend to lose gunfights. They're in a wrong mindset. They're not trained to fight. They're trained to play a game. Now, it's a good game, and it's a fun game, and they're very good at it. You know, everybody that's a champion deserves to be a champion. They had to beat everybody else to do that. But that's not a gunfight. Right. And, I, you know, having done that stuff, you can only draw a gun and shoot so quickly. I mean, the idea that, okay, Chuck is older now, therefore whatever we do that's newer is somehow better, Make that stick any time you'd like, because it's not going to do it. I'll take them down any time. Because right. you can only do this so well, so fast. Okay, they're no better today than, than my generation was 25 years ago. The difference is we have a lot more experience in the real world than they do. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so I would say stay away from the competition thing, unless that's what you want to do. And that's legitimate right. enough. I mean, there's nothing wrong with competition shooting. It's fun but don't guns. call it combat, because it's not. Right. And a lot of these fellows, because a lot of the so-called action, the practical pistol shooting, IPSC, USPSA, IDPA, that stuff, they shoot silhouette targets, so therefore they think they're shooting combat. Because there is a definite human target connotation to a silhouette target. If you're not going to really do it right, then don't shoot silhouettes. Right. But they do. But the scoring methodologies are irrelevant. They do not accurately represent the, you know, the dynamics and the, the, the anatomy of the human being that's involved in these fights as we talked about in the classroom and here on the range this morning. Yeah. Um, I would say avoid that if because it is counterproductive for self-defense. So what 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 are you <coughs> what should let's say girls who are like me, young professional living on their own, what should they look in a defensive handgun course? In well, the curriculum. everybody advertises, you know, to one degree or another, and they all say, here's what you're going to learn. Right. It isn't so much what you're going to learn, but how you're going to learn it and, and what the techniques involved to solve problem A or problem B or problem C and so on, what those techniques might be. Mm -hmm. There, for example, is a, is a never ending controversy that, that, that between the two most dominant pistol shooting stances, the Weaver stance and the Isosceles stance. Their popularities have gone back and forth over the last 40 years. And if you know the background, and I do, because I was actually physically present as the first of the, the so-called Cooper generation, when a lot of these techniques were invented in the first place. I know who invented them. I shot with them regularly. They were friends of mine. I was the youngest of that generation. It started with the, the, the youngest of the World War II generation. Mm -hmm. Jeff Cooper was a World War II guy, you know, a former Marine officer, et cetera, et cetera. And, and I knew all of those legendary guys. I knew Bill Jordan, the legendary Border Patrol shooter, you know. I knew all those fellows, you know, and, and I learned a lot from them. Uh, but the, the new guys, the new generations, do not have the benefit that previous generations have had uh, in terms of, of, of 
real world life and death experience. And, and I remember the first time I got shot. I will, of course, remember that moment you know, very lucidly for the rest of my life. And, and the thought struck me that, I, A, I was going to die. I thought I was being killed because I was taking hits. Mm -hmm. And I knew that I had made a mistake tactically that put me in a position of disadvantage. And lo and behold, Murphy's Law, the guy showed up right in front of me and lit me up with an AK-47. I thought I was dead. But I had trained myself to never quit, to constantly keep fighting on the philosophy that if you're killed, you'll be the first to know. Right. You know, if you're not, then keep fighting. And I did, and I won. I was hurt, but I won that fight mm -hmm. after being shot three times with an AK-47 point blank range. And the guy that, that I took down didn't make it. And that's what the, matters. That's the point. He hit the ground before I did. Right. You know, and I got up, and he never got up again. You know, and that's, you don't forget things like that. I realized at that point, you know what, this is real. This isn't training anymore. I mean, I was a tough guy, hard charging, young, you know, infantry type, you know, and, you know, big athlete in school and all that. And, and I loved that testosterone like so many young men, you know. That grew me up about 30 years in about three tenths of a second when I saw that gun firing and there was nothing I could do about it and I was getting hit. Mm -hmm. I watched the muzzle flash from that rifle, you know, it was 10 feet away. And you were fortunate enough to survive yeah, and luckily, learn from that experience. Absolutely, luckily. I was turning at the time, so I took all the hits on the right side of my body. He didn't center punch me. If he had, that would have been it. Yeah. If I hadn't been coming around the corner, and I was handling that corner wrong, incorrectly, and that's what led up to the whole thing. But the realization that this is real. This man is not a target. This is not a shooting range. This is the real fight. My first honest-to-God combat. And I was losing. Yeah. That scared me out of my wits, you know. I, that was a hell of a realization. I grew up right there. Yeah. And my whole perspective on training and techniques and everything changed right there. And I vowed from that point on, we're going to find the best way to do this. Whatever it takes, we're going to find the best way to do this. And that's why the big boys come to Chuck. You know, the special ops guys from all over the world come to train with me. Why? because they know the difference and they have to do the same stuff I had to do. Right. We, we're kindred spirits in that sense. They know that they can get killed too and they want the best techniques to try to manage that, you know, <laughs> down to reasonable levels. Yep, absolutely. Okay? And I've had armies adopt my techniques, the Swiss Army, the Swiss Air Force, the French, the Germans, and a whole bunch of countries have adopted my handgun, rifle, and submachine gun techniques. Nobody else in this business can say that. Now, why do you suppose they did that? Why did they adopt my stuff? They could go to anybody. They have lots of money and lots of resources, right? These are the, the armies of nations, not just a couple of guys, you know, or a police department, you know. They come to me when they could go to anybody they want. Why do they come to me? Because they know it works. And because within that, re that realm, I have that reputation of being the guy to go to, the go-to man. Because my stuff works, right. and they trust me. It's been field tested. It, yeah, this is <laughs> in not several theory. nations. My stuff works. <laughs> and anybody that's used it'll tell you. Oh, absolutely. I get phone calls all the time from all over the world. People telling me, "Hey, I just went. It happened to me, and it worked. Everything you said was absolutely true. Sure, it was. I remember it well. It happened to me too, before it happened to them. Yeah. They trust me. That's why they come to me, and they know my stuff works.